Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil our will, may. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come and lead us now. Your kingdom first, we hunger and we thirst, refuse to waste our lives, for you're our joy and prize, to see the captive hearts release, the hurt, the sick, the poor at peace, we lay down our lives for heaven's glory. We are your church. The darkness fear Show your mighty hands In our streets And land Set your church on fire When this nation bow Change the atmosphere Build your kingdom here We pray The darkness fear Show your mighty hands Heal our streets And let set your church on fire When this nation back Change the atmosphere Build your kingdom here We pray
This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicity, so he decided to break the engagement quietly as he considered this. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message. Through his prophet, Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife, but he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born and Joseph named him Jesus. Chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. The birth of Jesus. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin, like to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his word and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relatives, can have a child in her old age. And see, he was said, unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will fulfill. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her.
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everybody went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from Nazareth in the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was plucked to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. <laughs> she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that had happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning the child, and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart, and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's 
That was a pretty amazing performance, was it not? All right. We want to thank all of you for coming out. If you didn't come here in the very beginning, my name is Pastor Adam. I'm the family pastor here. We are so glad that you were able to come out and support our young students who put in a lot of time and effort uh, to sing and be able to be with you uh, tonight. Uh, as we have come together over these last uh, couple of weeks, this month, and uh, we're preparing for this, as I was talking to the students this morning, we were talking about the favorite things of Christmas and of uh, this season. And some say, coming together, we were talking with the students, and some said snowball fights, some said going to the mall and shopping with their parents, some said it's just spending time with you, family, and friends, some said it's watching Christmas movies, uh, looking at Christmas lights, putting up the Christmas tree, the Eagleville Bible Church Children's Christmas Program, maybe that's yours, uh, you know, coming out to all these different activities. But students, what is the best thing about the Christmas season? Christmas cookies! Of course, it's Christmas cookies. So, I'd like to tell you a quick little story. Uh, when I was 10 years old, and it was the birth of something amazing, the 90s. Uh, this is me up in the back in the left there. Yes, that's me uh, with Santa himself. Uh, so it was at that event, we went to my great aunt and great uncle's house. My grandmother had two sisters and I had lots of aunts and they were all amazing cooks. And as we got together as a family, we had a bunch of fun and we had an epic meal together. It was so much fun. And then after the meal came dessert and there was all kinds of dessert there was the typical things of christmas of fudge and the buckeyes but there was christmas cookies and that is one of the best parts of christmas the chewy ones the crunchy ones the soft ones the chocolate chips the the regular chocolate all the different kinds that were there and we got to enjoy them all and after eating a bunch of cookies I was ready for presents. Of course, presents is one of the best parts, right? So my grandfather called us out to the living room and I was figuring this is gonna be great because my grandparents always gave the best gifts. So I was so stoked, it's time for presents. And he said, sit down, I got a story to tell you. I was like, what? It was time for presents. Apparently he didn't get the memo. So, we sat down and he began to tell us the sweetest news, just like those cookies, the sweetest news of the story. And he began to tell us about this young couple, this young couple that it talks about in the Bible. And as he began, he told us about these three wise men. They were looking for the Messiah. The Jews believed that there was going to be a Messiah that would come, the Savior of the world. And it said this in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 10. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw a child with his mother Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened treasures and presents of gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And Jesus was born. And that was the Messiah that was born of a virgin in Bethlehem. And as we see, and when you say Jesus Christ, you're literally saying Jesus, the Messiah. That's what Christ means. The Messiah, the Savior of the world. That's who was born to that young couple, Mary and Joseph. That was the sweetest news that it could have ever come at Christmas. So Jesus would continue to live a perfect life. He would grow up. He didn't even sin. And we know that we sin. And what is sin? Sin is anything that we think or we do or we say that go against God. We disobey our parents. That is sin. We make a mistake. That is sin. And the Bible says that we have to pay for our sin. And paying for our sin is eternal separation from God. But the amazing part of the story is that God knew that problem and God loved you before you ever knew him. And he wanted to fix that. He knew that we deserved 
punishment for our sin. That's why he came and he was our substitute and he died on the cross for our sins. And as we always talk about in junior church, he didn't stay on that cross. He didn't stay up there on that cross. He was buried and he rose again three days later. Unlike anybody else in human history, he rose again. And that if we, A, admit, we always talk about this, and any one of these students can tell you this, that if we, A, admit that we're a sinner and ask God to forgive us, if we, B, believe that he died on the cross and rose again, and if we, C, confess him as our Lord and Savior, we can have a relationship with God. You might get what you want for Christmas. You might get what you need for Christmas. But ultimately, the sweetest gift that we could ever get is accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, accepting the news of the gospel, and accepting him into our life. That's what that famous verse that you see at baseball games and football games and all over the place in church in John 3, 16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, not be not separated from God, but will have eternal life. And as we talked this morning with the students, there isn't multiple ways to get to heaven. Jesus said there's only one way, and it is through him. So tonight, after you're finished with this and you congratulate your students and you take your pictures, go out and have a cookie or two and enjoy it. But remember, as you enjoy those cookies and the sweetness of the chocolate and the sweetness of the sugar that's in there, remember the sweet news of the gospel, that God loved you so much that he came to this earth, died on the cross, and rose again to have a relationship with you. If you take anything away from tonight, take that away, the sweetness of the news of the gospel. Let us pray together. Dear Lord, we just thank you for today. God, we thank you that these students aren't the future of the church, but they are the church today, God. And that we trust you that as they grow, God, that you are going to do amazing things in and through them. God, because they love you. We thank you for the great news of the gospel, that you came, you died on the cross and rose again. God, and you did that because you loved us. As we celebrate this Christmas season, God, I pray that you would bring that to our mind. As we eat these cookies, that we would remember the sweet news of the gospel, that you loved us. God, I thank you for all these family and friends that are here, God, that they would know that they are loved, that they are cherished, and that they, you love them, most importantly. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we get going on to our next song, there's a couple of people that I would like to thank. If you, can, if you that are out in the audience can give a special round of applause, let me tell you who they are, then we can give them a round of applause. Each individually, our audiovisual team that is up in the crow's nest, all of our people that are playing our musical instruments that have come to all of our practices, can you give them a hand? And then you may not see them. They are all throughout this place. There is Mr. Patrick that is back here, Miss Kayla that is down in front, Miss Jen. There's many of them that are helping out, and all of our le adult leaders that came and to set up this beautiful program for you. Can we give them a round of applause? And before we, before we give the kids one round of applause, if you would stand with me, we are going to sing Joy to the World as we get ready to leave. After we sing that, we will be dismissed. As we said, there will be a Christmas Eve service at 3, 5, and 7. We'd like to invite you out to that. But just a quick little thing before we give the kids one final round of applause and we sing Joy to the World. I just would like to tell you how proud I am of each one of you students that are here and being here for many years of seeing them grow up and to, be, to see them become the young men and young women that they are. And it, it, it brings tears to my eyes to see these students and to work with their parents and to see them that have, have struggled to speak and to learn and been in speech therapy and physical therapy and occupational therapy and all the different things and the struggles they've had that you don't even know who they are today because they are up here and they are doing a fantastic job and God has worked in and through them. Sing with us, joy to the world.